He's defected to the EU, who have in turn defected him back to America. So he will be back this week. He's in the same international like uh, passport control limbo as Rod Dreher. Oh, okay. All right. See, we don't need him. We have a segue already. There's a fucking, there's a fire new Rod, okay? Everyone knows Rod Dreher has been in, uh, he's been in Hungary the past little while. He's been uh, witnessing the, the last bastion of Christendom. He's been defending the, the West while taking livery cab bribes with 27-year-olds to tell them about how scary Blue's Clues is. He's been fighting against Globo Homo by... Uh, with brunches, mostly. Yeah. It seems fighting. like having oyster brunch is his main uh, zone of combat against the decadence uh, encroaching. I don't get it. Well, Globo Homo hates it when you soy face in front of oysters. They hate that. When you have yeah. when you have bottomless mimosas with the boys. Yeah. I love all of his dispatches from Hungary because it's like it is all stuff like that, like just the normal like cosmopolitan stuff he does. But then it'll also be like some like he'll be like, oh, I was doing the thing that like everyone in Hungary does where you give a bath to your friend in a big ball <laughs> foot bathtub like the three stooges. And um, my friend told me that his niece is gay now. Isn't that scary? But um, all good things must come to an end. And uh, we have a new entry from Rod detailing this end. This is called My Life is a Tom Hanks Movie. <laughs> this is a movie. Not, movie. Yeah. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Yeah. It, it's not Forrest Gump, where Forrest Gump uh, accidentally has a gay experience with several historical figures throughout <laughs> his life. It's <laughs> terminal. Okay. You know that 2004 Tom Hanks movie, The Terminal, about the guy who gets stranded in an airport and can't leave for years? Oh, because I'm an idiot, I'm getting to live that movie tonight. <laughs> this is a little rare self-deprecation from Rod. I just It just shows what, at the end of the day, just what a dandy little guy he is. Like, where does his mind go to a fucking Tom Hanks movie? Just a, a, a light entertainment. Well, that, I guess... Yeah, it does kind of show him as a dandy, because if this happened to me, I would immediately be threatening to kill myself. Yeah, I, I, I let, let, let's see what happened. I flew to Vienna late tonight from London, but got hung up on the border crossing at the airport. Turns out that I overstayed my allotted period in the Schengen area of the European Union. All the time I spent in Hungary earlier this year counted against my credit. Oh, no. Yeah. Tough. I had this crazy idea. The clock started over after going back to the U.S. for a month. Nope. I, I thought that you could get more than 90 days in a particular country. Nope. It's the whole Schengen zone. Boom. Got He's been Schengen zoned. Gosh. I'm thick. Oh, Fortuna. <laughs> oh, Fortuna. He's such a fruitcake. <laughs> He's fucking like it's like. No matter how homophobic he is or anything, he he is Martin Prince. Yep, at the end of the day, his geode must be acknowledged. Yeah, you just can't change who you are. Nope. Uh, I still remember him making that bullia base for his hillbilly family, and then like, uh, we're going to Arby's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of his family are like the supporting cast from Winter's Bone, <laughs> and he's <laughs> he's like, ooh. I've added a vanilla reduction to the profiteroles. <laughs> uh, the Australian Australian Board of Police were very nice, to be honest, but they couldn't let me in. Everybody loves an Austrian cop, noted worldwide for their friendliness. I mean, you know, a lot's changed, probably. Yeah, I'm sure they're much chiller now. Yeah. I had to be escorted by armed guards to go fetch my bag at the baggage carousel. I'm leaving for London on the first flight out in the morning and we'll be staying with friends while I appeal to the Austrian embassy for a residence visa so I can come back to the place I rented in Vienna and spend the rest of the summer. Matt and I were supposed to go next week to Mont Saint Michel, Rocamondor and other places, but I can't get back into Europe at all without a visa. Who's Matt? Yeah, who is Matt? I just want to say not me. It's not me. Um, he's going. He's going on a tour of religious sites with Matt in the in the Austrian countryside. I guess. Yeah, maybe he's doing like a kind of racist. Call me by your name. <laughs> well, we don't know who Matt is. Well, if, it, if you out there, if you know who Matt is, please contact us. Yeah, please. We want to know yeah. about Matt. If you, I would are, love to interview Matt. Honestly, I know what the deal is with Rod. 
If you if you were Matt Chrisman and you've been taking baths with Rod across the no. Zone, <laughs> no, just, I, whoever it is, okay. The police escorted me to an empty wing of the air, here at the airport. It's desolate. Find a bench if you can, one of them kindly suggested. I'm not being sarcastic. The two young officers, Gregor and Butel, really did feel sorry for me. But rules are rules, and I'm in the wrong. But I do want to thank them for their kindness and hope their bosses reward them for treating a bumbling American traveler with courtesy and compassion. As it happens, the door to the airport chapel was open, and I thought, yep, I'm going to bed down where people pray to God. I shove some benches together, and I'm about to sleep for three hours before I wake up and go meet the police to be escorted to my flight. What an adventure! <laughs> I tell you what, they need to build walls to keep dumbasses like me out of Europe. I'll probably end up having to be in England all next week, so maybe I can keep up. Maybe I can get up to the Anglo-Saxon holy sites or something. <laughs> this is, uh, I, I guess, this is kind of like a boring Tintin book. <laughs> It's kind of the vibe I'm getting here. A friend in Cambridge gave me a book called The Age of Bede after lunch, and I read the venerable Bede's Life of St. Cuthbert on the flight back. <laughs> just, just, just take his annex. Congratulations, yeah. buddy. Yeah. He wants you to know he did his homework. I read about Bede on my airplane. <laughs> on the flight back, I closed my eyes and asked St. Cuthbert to pray to a friend who is suffering. Maybe this current travail of mine is St. Cuthbert's way to get to get me to come to Lidisfarne without delay. There's a lot of uh, you like there's a lot of lore in here. Yeah. And I'm not just talking like religious lore, but there's like a lot of friends and people. There's Matt, there's his suffering friend. Yeah. Th yeah, there's the old divorce uh subplot. And he always he refers to this stuff always, yeah, like very uh, peripherally, and, and you just sort of have to know. And I think that that's because most of the people who read Rod read him obsessively uh, and through a parasocial lens, honestly. Well, it does see, kind of seem like a soap opera, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, like there, are, there, there are a lot of uh, storylines that get dropped and picked up, like the drag queens in the movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> like, and even all, as they're saying, all of his uh, culture war pieces are always couched in some narrative of him hanging out in Budapest, going to garden parties with like, young grad students. Like th That's part of every post, no matter what the ostensible subject is. I always picture the, the garden parties, like the Clay Shaw parties in JFK, where they <laughs> painted gold for some reason. So, like, okay, did he go on this journey, like, right after getting divorced? No, he, 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 uh, is got, he announced his divorce, like, in the middle of this. Like, we've been joking about how he just was still married. Everybody thought he was married, and then he was just in Hungary by himself for months. And then in the middle of that, he was like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything. This is, what it, this is a perfect example of what we're talking about. He says, I'm not going to get into the details, okay? We just, it's a, a tragedy, and it's happening, and we're both very, very distraught. But this has been a torture that my wife and I have been in since 2013. And it's like, why you got to drop that specific date? And now you got everybody asking, what the fuck happened in 2013? You didn't have to bring that up. Well, it's kind of like world building, you know, in fantasy <laughs> exactly. writing. Yeah, yeah, like fantasy writing when, you know, like George R.R. R. Martin, when he's not writing like a rhapsodic d description of meals. Oh, baby. It's like, yeah, he'll be like, oh, the the carriage tilted like a like a Gorfinox monster. <laughs> and it, a Gorfinox monster was never mentioned before, and now you, you're like, oh, what's the world of Gorfinox? This uh, place <laughs> yeah. in N Northeros or wherever. That, it's the same yeah. thing with Rod, where it's like, oh, well, you know, everyone knows what happened in 2013, and he never mentioned it. Yeah, it's his summer hall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the cataclysm that destroys the family, and we can never know. Yeah, I, uh, I would like to know what it is. but I'd I, love to know. He said one thing he said emphatically was it's not infidelity on either side. So you can take that as him at his word there. Like, what else could it be? You know, like, isn't that most of the real cataclysmic traumatic relationships in a marriage? Or it was something revealed? You know, was there some like uh, secret that was made uh, known that could happen? And then technically there's no infidelity. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, that that's weird, though, because it's like. Okay, well, if they're not in love anymore, 
if your rod isn't your thing, like, well, like, who gives a shit if you're not in love anymore? Absolutely. Like, no, that's the whole of institutions. That's the traditional view of uh, of marriage is that it is not for your happiness. You don't get married to be happy. You get married uh, uh, as part of a like a vow to someone that uh, that transcends like your personal uh, desires. It adheres you to higher goals. And in that case, like, I'm sorry, the fact that something happened, capital letters in 2013, uh, that doesn't cut it to, you know, justify divorce under your own moral principles. So that's why we're all really, that's why no one can ask anything other than, well, what the hell happened? Like, what is the actual scope of this? How do you, how are you able to carve out this exception if that's what you're doing, you know? But he won't, he won't tell us. He just leaves us hanging by a thread, getting tantalized. Well, okay. Do you do you remember when uh like Jim McGreevy it turned out he was gay? And, oh yeah. Uh, and then it's like, oh, and by the way, I also uh got my Mossad boyfriend a job in the New Jersey government. Yeah, that was the real thing. I was kind of mad about. Well, that's uh, obviously why he came out because he knew it was gonna it was gonna drop, and he wanted protection. It was very smart. Yeah, it's but like I, I, before I, they can impeach him and be like, hey, he has a gay lover in the Mossad in our in the government. He's able to go, uh, I'm, I'm gay, first gay governor, put it to the rafters, first gay governor, called yeah. it. I did, he did say one of my favorite phrases in politics when he was like, I'm a gay American. Yeah. That was a lot of our names in IRC that week after he said that. But um, gay American. But I, I do, I'm I just am saying, a like, gay American. <laughs> I the right. do you, but like, do you remember how after that? He was like, yeah, but like, don't worry. Me and my wife are going into counseling. Yeah, right. <laughs> She's like, I feel like, for what? <laughs> like, it seems like a pretty open and shut deal. Right, uh, I yeah. am in no way uh, comparing this to Rod Dreher and his uh, divorce or anything that happened. Okay. Anyway, back to, back to Rod's Tintin adventure. Update. Good morning. Slept three hours. As I put my recharged laptop away to leave, I saw a sign in English on the far wall instructing visitors not to sleep in the chapel. Oops. I sure do have a way of bumbling right across other people's rules and regulations, don't I? Well, I'm glad I didn't see it because I would have ended up sleeping in the hallway. Off to Blighty. He's the freaking orthodox Mr. Bean. Just causing shenanigans everywhere he goes. Well, it's just like I don't remember this level of self-deprecation in his writing before. No, no, no. It was always very tortured. But I mean, I, I guess it's hard to really spin this because this is a boneheaded move on his part. He just fucked up. Like, how do you not read the the conditions of like a long term stay in Europe? It seems like it's pretty basic. So he's got to kind of be like, yeah, I'm a dumbass. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like there wasn't anything else he could have write, written about that week. I'm sure there was like, you know, a, a brunch, like a drag brunch or something you could have written about. I don't know. It's sort of like, do you remember when David Brooks, after he got divorced? he, he Oh, yeah. The second weird, mountain. Yeah. The, he, started, he like wrote all those weird articles where he goes to Penn Station and he's like, just to think everyone walking through here sucks and fucks each other. And it's beautiful. <laughs> and I guess that's kind of what Rod's going through. But yeah, his is a, you know, sort of pathetic annoying self-deprecation the kind that makes everyone uncomfortable well that's that's the rod update yeah rod's doing great and we're gonna see if he gets back into uh mainland europe so that he can visit you know like saint stephen's coccyx or whatever the fuck he's gonna do as a pilgrimage yeah he's gonna go all around the baltic nations and see every saint that was killed by being encased in wax and you know related to his divorce or whatever at his new new persona of like a, a bumbling world traveler, sort of a racist Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Carl Pilkington, who's always seeing the trans menace lurking everywhere. You know, we'll 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 see. I will not I would not say that's one of Rod's strongest works, but yeah, sometimes you gotta phone it in, right? You gotta give a little slice of life. No, that's the thing, is he doesn't have the heat, he just brings uh the schmaltz. He brings his personal relationship, which you know, the, the readers are there for that, too. So it is a value for them. I mean, look at the comments. I looked at the comments of this piece. A lot of people being like, oh, yeah, when if you're if you have to spend time in England, you need to go to Southwick upon Buttockshire. And there's <laughs> there's a uh, uh, there's a Merovingian temple 
uh, that you need to visit. It's it's in a heath, you know. It's like you gotta uh, you gotta find uh, you know you gotta basically directions to the Holy Grail is what they're giving them. Uh, and then other people are saying charming stuff like, uh, you know, it's fucked up that they did this to poor Rod, but they'll let all those uh, African refugees in there, no problem. Actually saying that compared to uh, refugees, Rod is being discriminated against. I'm reading the comments now. It looks like Rod may have worse repliers than me. Oh, yeah, they're pretty bad. All right, we got Crispy from five days ago. I had to be escorted by armed guards. Sensible. I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. <laughs> it's a classic bad riff, you know, yep. sort of attempted a, a, attempted levity by being mean to the author. Yeah, yeah, implying intimacy, yeah. I hope when you get back to the States that your house hasn't collapsed, uh, in parentheses, money pit. Uh, since you're on the road and you'd be asked about Austrian writers, Road to Mecca by Mohammed Assad. I know it's a title that's unlikely to tickle your fancy, but the writing is good as exuberies and Chatwins. Now that you're on kind of a desert island, which three books, apart from the Bible, would you have with you? And Rod <laughs> does not reply to this. Oh, man. Brutal. Just reaching out, trying to have a convo. Ouch. I don't think Rod ever replies to these people. Um, perhaps the Vatican finally found a refugee. They would be comfortable deporting. Ugh. Wow. Ooh. I guess these are all my repliers when they become conservative in like yeah. 20 years. Yeah, after they get bitter because you spurn them. Yeah. Many such uh, cases. If you and Matt are considering secular entertainments, I strongly suggest checking out the Festival of San Fermin in Pamplona, Spain from July 5th to the 15th. The famous running of the bulls. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. Is Matt his son? No. I, that's a, Yes, is he? Who is Matt? If it's his son, that's one thing. But he, he, wouldn't you say like my son Matt, just to contextualize it? First time it's mentioned in a, in an article. Well, I mean, like, hmm. Okay, I okay. I think we found a picture. No, this is some asshole named John Morgan. God damn it! Is not there a fucking Rob Drodre or Wikia? Yeah, we need a wiki his here. Questions. Honestly, given his given his uh, commenters, there might be. His and it'd be very useful. Stuck. I need to know the lore here. His commenters are fucking worthless. They're like, they're as shitty as mine.